Hello, my English speaking friends. Hope you're doing fantastic today. And I am on a roll. Here is yet another translation of one of my original videos in Spanish. Uh, good luck. Good morning, my dear audiophiles. Today is the day to announce a new product by iFi. Yes, iFi has another new product. And I will talk to you about it. And we'll do the unboxing of the Zen Stream. Of course, this is an old video. But first, I'm going to talk to you about streaming. What is streaming? Because there are a lot of people that don't understand the concept, and that includes me. But I'm going to try to explain to you something about the history, my history with streaming. If you're not really interested, I will leave a link in which you can go directly to the unboxing. Many years ago, when you were not born, there was Pandora, and there was also Spotify. And other streaming uh, devices online. But what happened if you wanted to stream from your computer, if you wanted to reproduce HD archives, you know, high definition uh, files that you could buy as an album, 2496 or 24192, or you could also do ripping. You can rip your own CDs, which is what I started doing. I ripped my CDs so I could throw them in the garbage or put them away so I didn't have to see them or use so much space displaying them. So the first solution I found, which on which I was an early adopter, and it was a little bit, there was some teething pains. It was called the Logitech squeeze box. The first one was a display that was here on your table, and it would show you all the information of the track, and it allowed you to connect to your computer through an Ethernet cable. I know that in English is Ethernet. In Spanish, we still use the same word because we have so many anglicisms. Ethernet, Ethernet, I don't know. But here I am with the next generation after that of the original of the squeeze box, which I had. I had, of course, all the manifestations of them. And this one didn't have a display, but it came with a remote control, and the remote control did have a display. And it sat on its base, and it could charge from the base. And you can see all the information from the songs and select what you wanted. It didn't work as well as in theory, but the way you connected it was through the Ethernet to your router. It had to be connected to your home uh, router system. It had to be hooked up to the system of the house. And then you could use the internal converter, which didn't sound very good. Or you could connect it to a DAC throughout optical or SPDIF. Or to your DAC, your receiver, if it has a built-in DAC. It works fine most of the time, but it's old technology. So what I bought after that was a Pioneer streamer, the N50A. And I bought it because it, plays, it played DSD files. And I bought it directly from Japan through Amazon. And it was very good and it sounded great. But it was a built-in unit with everything. You know, it was a streamer and a DAC and everything. So this, you can get a unit like this, you know, like from Sonos or, or Blue Sound, where everything is built in and you solve problems. But the biggest problem I have was that I had a NAS a double uh, hard drive, a network server. And the Pioneer had a limit to the size of your library, how big it could be, how many tracks you could have. So I started having interruptions, or gapless playing was an issue, and it started to pause. And then I realized eventually that it had to do with the size of your library. So. I bought something called the Sonic Transporter, which is an Intel i7 computer specifically made for Rune usage, to use R-O-O-N, Rune, the program. It's a very sophisticated system where you can have 
the music on your hard drive, but it's also integrated with uh, services like Tidal and Cobus. But what I like about Rune is the experience. It's superior to any other system that you use to browse music, to listen to music. It gives you a lot of information, especially for classical music. But let me show you here. Here's a Rune app for the computer. You have to download it for your computer. And although I don't like the new uh, updated format, I'm not so used to it. But at the home page, you have different options. They all can be configured. This is the recent activity. And this is all the albums that I have. All the artists, how many tracks you have. You can play all of them in, at random if you want. I also have some playlists that I've made for particular situations, for test, for tone test, for my quads, for vocal music. So, of course, you can use uh, on your phone a special app that you use as a remote. Uh, but you can also play it through your computer, through a laptop or something like that. And these are the areas that I can play music on. And here it says Sense Streamer, the iFi Sense Streamer. And I have it hooked up to my system here. And if I want to play some Anna Netrebko, which is fantastic, play. And you can hear Omio Babino Caro. And you can see on the Zen streamer it's playing. There's more information. You can see the quality that has been played on from the source to the DAC. It talks about the MQA encoding uh, since it comes from Tidal. This purple light tells you that is the maximum quality attainable in Rune. If you play an MP3 or a different kind of file, it will be a different color, sometimes yellow, sometimes green. But here it recognizes the iFi streamer. And also, I'm using the iFi Diablo converter, which is also by iFi. I'm a little bit distracted because I'm enjoying Anna Netrebko singing. Here, you can uh, go to Setup. You can make it a private zone so you cannot play from another place. This is how you can play DSD natively or DOP or PCM, in case that you have a DAC that doesn't reproduce DSD. Also, you choose whether your DAC has MQA support or not. Because Rune does some of the unfolding in software for MQA. So even if you have a DAC that doesn't do MQA, uh, Rune will unfold some of the files for you halfway. But you get information about the composer, about the orchestra, the performers, the, con the conductor, Antonio Papano. Let's just say that I like this record and I want to find out more from the Royal Philharmonic. You go here and here you can see how many records the Royal Philharmonic has available in Rune and Cobus, but also maybe in my hard drive. Or maybe if you, you like the conductor, you go to Antonio Papano, discography. And you can see, let's say I want to hear Janine Jansen's playing Bartok. And I press play. And I watch the credits. Oh, this is Brahms, that's not the Bartok. And I can see more information about her 
and more records that she has recorded. So there's no end to this. You can continue to discover music, find new horizons of favorite musicians or bands. But also you have here versions. You have the option of listening on Tidal because Rune integrates Tidal and Cobus, in addition to having your hard drive music. So these are the two Tidal versions. You can listen with MQA or without MQA for those of you who hate MQA for some bizarre reason. Or also on Cobus, you can hear 2496 or other resolutions. I look at this, it's interesting. Let's say we look at my library and you want to look at the famous sign in the sky. And when you go to versions, you can see that this means this is my version in the library, in my hard drive. So this is a copy I did from my DVD audio, 24192. But also, there's other versions on Tidal. Um, none of them are MQA. I guess Alan Parsons doesn't like MQA. And also on Cobus. But if I add any of these albums to my library, they remain as if they were in my library, even though they might be residing on the cloud. So I have access to them as if they were in my hard drive. Here's also the DVD audio version of Turnover Friendly Card, 2492. And that's the location of the file. But also, you can find it on Tidal and Cobus. So it's much more easier to find music and know where it is, whether it's in a real format in your hard drive, but that is also available in different uh, services online. When I installed Rune and I bought the computer, the computer only carries the software. So you need a streamer to connect it to the computer. Of course, you can buy streamers that come with a converter included, but there's an audio file version to do it. And that's to do it in three separate parts, the computer, the streamer, and the DAC. And the first streamer that I got was the Sonore Micro Rendu. There was also at the time I could have gotten something called a Raspberry Pi, which is it's an appliance that's used for many applications in computers. But Sonore Micro Rendu is a, it's a Raspberry Pi that has been stripped of, of unnecessary parts to produce less noise. It consumes less power and produces less noise just for audio performance. So how does this work? You hook it up to your computer, to your room computer via Ethernet. Ethernet. Why? And here's the important thing. Because you have galvanic isolation. There's no electric connection between the streamer and the computer. So you're not leaking any noise from the computer to the streamer. I mean, computers are noisy. They, they have a lot of chips and things that produce noise. And they have fans. And But while you're connected through Ethernet, then you have galvanic isolation. It's very important when you're going to reproduce high-definition files. And since that doesn't have a DAC, they also call it a network bridge, which is unifies the DAC to the computer. And it has a USB connection that you... Uh, I don't have the cable. I'm not prepared for this. Once this is connected, once this is connected to the computer, then all you have to do is connect it to the DAC via USB cable. Ah. So now that's why it's called a network bridge. 
it connects the computer and the DAC. And that's what reproduces the music. That's what puts the music in order. So recently, I bought uh, one called SOTM, made in Korea. And they're not supposed to really make a difference in sound because all they do is order the music in the right place and, you know, make the music play to the DAC. But I thought that the SOTM has more agility. It works faster. There's not so much delay. I seem to like it a lot with the SOTM uh, streamer. I think it works better with my uh, room computer. <coughs> Although I also like the Sonor Micro Rendu very much. These units, you can use them with room, but you can also use them with the DNLA, DLNA, or you can use it with squeeze box format, or uh, a UPMP, title. You don't have to use it with Rune only if you don't want to. But to me, Rune is the best. But here's the deal. iFi has now show, showed up with a new product which has all of those things that I was talking about, but other things. It has Wi-Fi in addition to Ethernet. So you don't have to use an Ethernet cable anymore. Uh, it processes MQA. It processes all the formats. And on top of that, it's compatible with every possible uh, uh, protocols. So it works like a Rune endpoint because Rune uses a different uh, protocol. It's not DLNA. It's called RATT. So here we go. Here's a guide. A quick start guide. On this side, it shows how to connect it. This one, that was the other side. And also, you can output coaxial instead of USB. The coaxial has a very good femto clock. Um, it's supposed to be a, a, a superior kind of connection to your DAC to the SPDF. Instructions. And here's a little unit, which has a typical look of most Zen products. I would, I would prefer a more classical looking box, but that's okay. That's, uh, if you have a bunch of those, they look kind of cute. You can make a special rack with all of them on top of each other or side to side. So let's see, what am I missing? Okay, here's the Ethernet cable, connect it there, and then that connects to your uh, router or to your computer. And then this other cable connects to your DAC, that's an audio, digital audio DAC connection, but the one on top you can connect a hard drive to it directly if you want. And then that's the SPDF, digital, for a DAC or a receiver that has a DAC. Here are the accessories. Wow, well, look at that. It comes with a blue Ethernet cable. Nice. They usually give you that color. Interesting. What else? The power supply. i5 branded. And this is the audiophile version. 9 volts. 
not five, nine volts. And the antenna, Wi-Fi antenna. This is what uh, frees you from the chains of Ethernet. So you can have it in any room and hook it up to a DAC or you can connect it to an amp amplifier for headphones, a DAC amp for headphones. And you can have just a separate station just for headphones. What a great idea. This little tool helps you select the type of connection you want to make to the system. I have it set for Rune, but they have a title exclusive also. There it is. Ah, very nice. What is the advantage of the Zen stream over the Sonore Microrendu? or my SOTM 200 Ultra. These are very audiophile units and very estimated and very appreciated by audiophiles. In addition of this one doing what the other two do is that it has Wi-Fi. I can use this unit in my bedroom or any other room in the house that doesn't have an Ethernet connection. Oh, where's the cable? I'm losing things here. Okay. I, <laughs> I can't use this in a room that doesn't have Ethernet. Ethernet is not such a popular thing in houses anymore because everybody has Wi-Fi. And I can't use that one on Wi-Fi either. So that one stays in my reference room. But if I want something in another living room, or my bedroom, and I want to. If I want to improve uh, streaming quality, this can connect through Wi-Fi, and it can also connect to any app that you have, in addition to Rune. So this one can be a solution, and it also costs half of the price of the other two. So what is against having to have a streamer? Is that today you can get a receiver that has a built-in streamer or you can have a blue sound that also has a hard drive and a streamer. And you can have all the three units in one. So that's the disadvantage of these things. I repeat, this is not a DAC. I know it looks like every other iFi unit but that's only a network bridge. It's just a connection between the computer and the DAC. It doesn't have the computer I have. You can hook it up to any computer. It could be a laptop that, or an Intel NUC or a Mac Mini, and you can install the Rune software on it. But, you know, it's well-made, like every iFi product. It has an incredible number of options. And it costs half of the price or less. So, again, if he has come to throw the gauntlet like a bulldozer, and he might just take over the market share, there's no reason not to buy it if you're looking for some a product of this type. And I could keep it also to use it in my bedroom or another living room. So, I guess I'll sell the other ones. Thanks for watching this video and uh, please leave a request in the comments for another of my Spanish videos that you want me to translate. Okay? Thanks so much. Consider joining Patreon if you want to help us out and join our chat on Telegram.